Well, welcome back. This is part two of our switching at Clinchfield. We just got done switching out those two cars. The box here and the red and the refrigerator car. And prior to that, we switched out a bunch of empty hoppers. And of course, we have these full hoppers to our in front of us as well, but we're done switching now. And we got the rest of our cars that we're gonna take through the mountain. I was going to say down the mountain, but actually uh, it's, it's, it's down a little bit and up a little bit. And we're going to use the HUD a little bit more on this run. Uh, although typically when I'm, when I'm uh, in play mode, I guess, uh, I, I like to uh, not have the HUD on. But we will sneak the HUD on and off so you can see uh, the grade. One of the things about when you're in the simulator is you can't feel from the seat of your pants whether you're going up or down or you know so we'll, we'll kind of cheat and turn the hut on here and there and take a look at the the grade whether we're going uphill downhill or whatnot but once again uh we watch part one it's a beautiful morning you know, running through the mountains of, uh, i think i think clinchfield's in partly in virginia i may have said West Virginia before it got it wrong but uh, love the riding in the caboose looking out the back that must have been uh, sometime in those days never in a caboose to ride something special Well, we're just kind of creeping along here, and I do want to talk about dynamic brakes. We had mentioned a little bit about them before, but didn't really have an occasion to use them. So hopefully we'll get to the point where we'll be using them, and you can see in practice how they're used. love peeking out the window and looking back at the train. These old locomotives, they're, to me, uh, a joy to run. One of the nice things about, you know, gameplay and having a simulator is you get the opportunity to run old equipment, different kinds of equipment. Looking at the HUD, we see we're, we've got a slight downhill grade, 0.2%, not too bad, but we'll start picking up speed here in a little bit. Without a doubt, a beautiful morning. And this is one of the things I love about the Clinchfield is the scenery. It's a mountain scenery and winding uh, through the trees and the mountains. It's just a nice, uh, relaxing, uh, relaxing way to go. We were talking a little bit last time about the cars. Uh, they actually in the Clinchfield they got the, the two types of box. They got the yellow refrigerator and the red box. Um, 
and the caboose and they're all weathered quite nicely but I was talking about the uh, paint editor it'd be nice if we could import um, the default box with the paint scheme for the road name uh, into the paint editor so we can weather it ourselves and have several different types of looking uh, cars of the same road name and uh, so not every car would just be a, a mirror image of every other one or, or you know a clone of every other one uh, in the uh, clinch field the the weather quite nice it's not too bad but like when you're running um, like sand patch grade and all the box cars are blue you know almost a pristine blue with the yellow CSX label on it a road name on it um, there's no variety to the train and that's not how trains normally look now this old engine though it kind of bops around going through the mountains and uh, gives you a good feel and we're we're <laughs> We're running now. We're, we're downgrade and uh, we're over speed. I just blew past that road and uh, it is time. Not only put on the, the brakes here and slow ourselves down, but to kind of go and take advantage of the, um, if we ever get ourselves slow enough, we can take advantage of the dynamic brakes. I'll show you how those go on kind of let the train go running loose on me but you're going to use the selector handle and we're going to kind of back off of this selection we don't want more locomotives but we want to go off and then to brake mode and then once we got that then the throttle handle now is going to be using the traction motors to uh, kind of reverse traction so we now are using dynamic brakes and that's how you do it it's really not that hard um, the handle itself is a little tricky uh, if you just want to use the mouse to, to do the selection I, it helps me using the HUD so I know which way <laughs> which way the the mouse is selecting the uh, the modes but I finally got it into brake mode and, and we're gonna slow down here Normal speed limit is, you know, between 15 or 20 miles an hour. And so I like to keep it below 20. And you can see up there we're running, we're running quite fast. I had talked about uh, somebody in a video I was watching saying that you weren't, uh, you, you couldn't use the dynamic brakes and the ear brakes at the same time. And I didn't know if he meant that it wasn't physically possible or if he meant it wasn't appropriate to use the two of them. Uh, but nevertheless, I don't know what the truth is. And uh, can't trust everything you hear on the internet. You can't trust me. I don't, I don't know anything about what I'm talking about from a world, a real world experience. Uh, you know, but from the simulator, I can tell you it works fine. You can, uh, you can use both. I do use both. Uh, if, if my train is getting a little bit much for the uh, dynamic uh, brakes, then I'll, I'll go ahead and use the air brakes. I would think you would want to use both because the, the air brakes let you uh, break the back end of the train. And in the old days, going down a mountain... So in the old days, you didn't want the back of the end, uh, the back of the train rolling free and piling up into the locomotive. It was the only the locomotive that was breaking. So I would think you would still be managing the rear end of the train uh, through the hills using the air brakes. You kind of take a lot of the the heat and a lot of the pressure off the overuse of air brakes by having the the. Uh, dynamic brakes you know working the, the traction motors so like I said there's uh, we're all done switching we're just rolling uh, through the mountains now uh, sometimes it's going down sometimes it's going back up again um, 
think we're on an upgrade. But, but as we roll through, uh, we'll enjoy the scenery. Another thing I had talked about was uh, the beautiful scenery that uh, Train Sim World has, especially in this, this uh, clinch field here. Uh, but in some sections, now that we're coming off the, uh, the branch line around the main line, uh, you can see some of the bald spots in the mountains. And I guess some of that may be realistic. Uh, but you see over here, uh, down along the shoulder of the railroad, we have some uh, underbrush, some, you know, growth, some medium growth under the trees. And a lot of times, uh, we'll see as we roll through, there's uh, mountain spots that don't have any the underbrush. <laughs> I wasn't sure if this, this van was wanting to go across, or he just seems to be parked on the side of the road here. Maybe he's fishing in the stream, I don't know. Well, we're slowing down here and we need to get off the, the brake mode and get our throttle back into uh, forward traction. So I've got to use the selector and select two. And so this is how this is this old locomotive is done. Since it doesn't have two handles, you know, separate for, for dynamic from the throttle, it takes a little bit of, uh, of maneuvering with the selector handle. This is part of uh, an engineer getting to know the road he's on, the route, and every, every nook, every every uh, niche that he's going to have to r roll through. So. Slowing down here and checking the points up ahead. From here on in, uh, from, excuse me, from here on out, we're rolling backwards. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're about ready to get off this branch line we've been on for quite a while and down onto the main line and I just wanted to make sure that that switch was manually changed out. But once we get past this switch, uh, all of the switches on the main line are, are remote switches and uh, they all should be in the correct position and we can just kind of run through them. So we got the green to go on the main, so here we go. All right, we got off that branch and here we are back on the main and we're in the upward climb now. 0.3%. Uh, And you notice I put it back in. I put it back into uh, braking mode. That's not what I want. We're going up. Pay attention. I had it in my mind that once we got on the main, we were going downhill, and I wasn't paying attention to the HUD. Yep. All right. So now we use the selector. We get back into the traction motors using the throttle to, to take us up upgrade now so embarrassing but hey that's all part of what the whole YouTube uh, videos are about seeing how uh, seeing seeing what mistakes could be made and how you deal with them and, and, and it's just like I just said it's once you start to know your route you've done it a few times 
this is one of the things I had thought about is the way Train Simulator 2 is set up, I, I swear people, what they're doing and, and the way they market it, uh, and maybe it's because this is what human nature does, is they'll have, uh, they'll have 24 hours of services and the people will go through and conquer each of the service and then they're done, they finish the route. So in that 24 hours, if they had 25 services, then, you know, then they'll say, okay, I don't know if that route's worth it. It only has 25 services. Give me one that's got 35 or 50 services in that 25, uh, 24 hour period. And, you know, but to me, this is not, uh, not how I want to play. Uh, I want to get to know the route and to get to know the route um, you have to run it over and over and over again and, and a lot of times those services are just they are running it the same route over again just a different time of day so that's kind of nice but what I'm saying is in, in the most part I think in human nature the uh, competition or the, the uh, competitive mode of our brain say hey I just I, I want to get all the services checked off and once I got those checked off then you know then w what else is there to do I quite often hear people talking about I don't like this route I mean I, I conquered it all in a few days and I don't know there's not much to do and I never look at it that way um, you know I look at it as learning a particular uh, road and the ups the downs the the curves and 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 uh, driving that train most efficiently. And this is one of the appealing things I think about the passenger runs. It's not to run the passenger run just to complete that service, but run the same passenger run over and over again. And that's where the point system kind of helps you out because then it shows you how efficient you were and if you're getting better. But I almost don't need the points. I know if I'm hitting the. Uh, if I'm stopping at station right where I'm supposed to stop or over, you know, underdoing it or over or going past it, and, you know, you kind of know. And if you keep into the time, you get better. And you have to do this thing um, multiple times before you get good at some of those passenger runs. And it's the same thing with freight. You know, you get to know if you're running the brakes and you, you need to know the grade. You need to know when you're going up, when you're going down. And, when you come into a curve, when you got to blow a horn because you got a, a, a crossing that kind of sneaks up on you. Um, to me, so I like running the same service the same time of day over and over again. I don't really care to run them in the dark. I don't really care to run them in the middle of the day uh, because I like the the lighting that you get in the evenings, in the mornings, and and. Um, it's kind of bland. A lot of the a lot of the routes that are you know have a lot of good scenery to them become bland in the middle of the day. And I find so many of the scenarios, um, and I'm talking scenarios now, are, are right at the one o'clock hour. And I don't know why. Of course, the services are done around the you know the 24 hour clock. But, um, that's why I like to choose a service over the uh, scenario. Because then you can choose the time of day and you can choose the weather. Um, and then you can run the same service multiple times and, and you only uh, get to know the, that particular route at a, at a good time of day of, of lighting. Or, or two or three different times during, different times during the day that you, you, you can appreciate uh, that service. Unfortunately, if there's a lot of tasks to be done during a service, then it, it's annoying because, you know, it's telling you uh, what to do. And I really don't need a boss over my shoulder telling me what to do and how far to drive. All those nuanced tasks. I'd rather they just told me the end objective. You know, and I mentioned that before in part one that... Uh, you know the end of obje the objectives that we should be looking at is what cars get dropped off where at what location you know kind of easier in the passenger mode is like uh, you know people get dropped off and picked up at a particular station that's your location that's the objective and 
So the passenger runs, I think the objectives are, are right on. Uh, these freight runs, the objectives end up uh, becoming quite annoying when they're telling you to get out and switch a point and all the things that you, you know, you, you just want to do because you know your job and you know what to do. So I've been ranting about this through several videos, but uh, Yep, still going uphill. Taking a good look at the, uh, the hut again. Yeah, I've been ranting about that quite a bit. Hopefully at some point, somebody will hear one of my videos and say, Hey, maybe he's got a point there. I don't know. But, you know, um, looking along the side here, you know, we do see a lot of trees going up the mountain without any underbrush. And I'm not sure why. I mean, maybe in reality that that, that could be the case sometimes. But we go from uh, three-dimensional models with underbrush to a two-dimensional texture for the floor. Kind of funny, uh, you know, here in America, we always call the ground the ground, but the Brits, they call it the floor. Um, but yeah, for the for the ground, you know, so you've got a two-dimensional texture for the ground. And, you know, in the right time of day, it looks kind of nice, but it can, if you're not careful, it can get repetitive looking because two-dimensional textures, uh, you know, are, um, are, are uh, repetitive. So, actually, you know, I'm kind of impressed that this looks as nice as it does. But, you know... Not sure why we don't have more underbrush there. Uh, at first, I thought maybe it was because of performance, but when I ran this route uh, once before, a few times before, I, I know that uh, there are sections of just like this where there is the underbrush, and you're not looking at the two dimensional texture on the ground, um, and I don't see any difference in the performance. But maybe that depends on where you are. I'm starting to creep down here. Need a little more throttle. And you can see on the amp airs there that uh, I got a good, good uh, pulling. You see here that we're getting a little bit more scrub and stuff. But yeah, actually this two-dimensional texture that we're seeing from the ground is kind of nice. It is one of the nicer textures. Some of the uh, desert ones are really bland looking. But one of the things I don't like is that when you have just two-dimensional texture and you stick those rocks up against it, they look like they're plastered on. Like a model railroad, you know, where they're just glued them on to the side of the texture and not natural. Well, I came along and uh, realized that I'm about a third way through and I still got an hour to go. At least. You know, I'm not sure, but I got at least another hour to go until I get to the yard on the far side of this mountain. And I don't, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not thinking I want to have a video that goes that long. Uh, I know some of you probably would like that, but uh, uh, I think for most of us, you know, that that's a long video. I noticed that when I watch people who post Run 8 videos, they like to do that. They like to post uh, train running for hours on end. 
you know, sometimes two, three, four hours and even more. I've, I've seen five hour videos and, and run eight. And, um, I'm not sure who's sitting through all those. Some of that makes sense for a live stream because I'm not doing a live stream right now. But. Or more of just doing a pleasure uh, instructional video. Not the best example here on using dynamic brakes, but I think uh, it is, without a doubt, uh, you're able to see how to use them in this this uh, this locomotive, which is definitely a little different than how you use the dynamic brakes in the, in the newer newer versions of the uh, Jeep 38. Now, take a look now. We see the ground has got three-dimensional uh, textures. Under, uh, you know, here we are. you got the undergrowth on here. That looks so much better. So I'm not sure why in some sections they got the undergrowth and others they don't. Maybe that's the way it is in real life. I, I don't know. But... Uh, Yep, still going uphill. You know, but as far as scenery goes, uh, it, it's you know it's about taking advantage of the this the grasses and the scrubs and stuff to hide the two-dimensional ground texture. And it looks nice. You know, looks nice. Well, it's amazing how much railroading you know, is in this mountain railroad. I mean, this is going to go on, like I said, for at least another hour or more before we come to the end of our, you know, to the end of our line. And uh, I don't intend to, to really take this much further. But, you know, one of the things that people have complained about with Train Sim World 2 is the routes are pretty short, usually 30 to 40 miles and we get one that's 50 or 60 like we did with uh, the Wyoming one um, Cheyenne to Laramie uh, that one I think is 60 miles but those are short runs in, in a lot of people's viewpoint but you know I gotta tell you this may be a short run but it's taken me hours to do it and uh, You know, that's that's about all I want to do. It would be nice. Uh, I, you know, I gotta agree. It would be nice if we had a, if we could run from one destination, you know, to another destination of some distance just for fun. But uh, that would be a lot of sitting on the computer and uh, you know, a lot of hours of just sitting and running. And, and a lot of us would actually do that. I mean, I think I would be one that would do it if I had to run. Uh, I think the one in, uh, I used to love in Train Simulator and, and actually still run it once in a while is the Miami to West Palm Beach, which is, you know, that, there's a lot of miles there, 75 miles or 90 miles worth of run. I can't remember how many miles, but it's, it's quite a long run. And, you know, but... Uh, it, it, it would be fun on occasion to actually go from one destination to another of significant length, but uh, game playing time, uh, you know, these routes offer a, a lot of game playing time, even if they're a short run.
Well, hopefully you've enjoyed my uh, demonstration on how to use the dynamic brakes on this older locomotive. Incompetent as maybe it was. But uh, I've enjoyed uh, spending the time with you. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, another episode of uh, Running Trains in Train Sim World 2 through the mountains and early morning calm and beauty I would say nice scenery so until next time enjoy your railroad